So, variance and standard deviations. Here we are. Very, 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 very important concept. If there is one concept of this course, I should point at that you should bring with you for the rest of your lives is the concept and understanding of variability and random variability. If you sort of get the nature of that, everything else is easy. All the rest of the tools are building on an idea of understanding and dealing with variability, variation, uncertainty in one way or the other. So the concept as a concept is really at the heart of what is going on here. Technically, it can easily be defined how to compute what we would call sometimes if we emphasize that it's a sample computation, we might call it, and also if you go to the links, it will be called a sample variance to underline the fact that it's something for now, for today, something that we compute on a sample that we have given in a data, in an Excel sheet or somewhere else. There is some data, one column, that's the sample. Then we can compute the variance as follows. We take the mean as we computed before the break. Then we take each individual data point in the sample and see how much it differs from the mean. Then I square it and I add them all up and then I average them, almost. The way I think about it is that I average. I don't average by n, I average by n minus one. Can get to that in a sec. And then the standard deviation is, I mean, in daily speech, it's the same thing. I mean, it measures the same thing, but on a different scale. The standard devi deviation is defined as the square root of the variance. So, so that's in a way how we define it. The variance is defined as the average squared deviation, right? The average squared deviation. The standard deviation is then the root of that with the interpretation in our minds that it is the average deviation or to be explicit, the average absolute deviation, because whether it's minus two or plus two uh, will be the same thing in this measure here, right? So the standard deviation measures the average difference to a mean. That's an important concept, right? To be able to quantify differences. There are some notes in the chapter, by all means, read those notes. Uh, I'll spend very little time now, but let me just spend one second 30 seconds. I have some remark on why n minus one and not n. I say it's the average, but you don't divide by n, which you should if it should be an average in the, our usual way of thinking. Well, there is a technical reason for that. The reason is that we are cheating a little bit actually. What we would like to put in here would actually not be the sample mean, but the true mean, the population mean. That would be the proper thing to put in here to, in the best possible way, measure differences to the mean, because that's what we are trying to measure, differences to the mean. Well, the practical side of it, we don't have the mu, that's, a, that's an uh, infinite thing. We need infinite information to get the, the mu, the, the population mean. So we do the second best, and the only obvious thing that we could do is to plug in the computers, the sample mean instead of the population mean, and then we're cheating a little bit. We're cheating a little bit because the individual numbers, they will be closer to the sample mean than to the population mean because it's their own mean. They are taking part of making that mean. So we're cheating a little bit. It turns out mathematically we are cheating by one degree of freedom, as you would call it. There is a linear space, if you're into linear algebra, that has one dimension lower than full dimension. So that's, there is a pretty neat math theory behind that also, but here is part of the intuition. The second thing is, why the heck don't I just compute the average? 
I shouldn't put it there because I don't want to compute it. I could compute the average uh, deviations, right? I could take the deviations, take the absolute value, and take the average of those. Well, that's not at all com meaningless. Such a measure exists. Some people might compute it sometimes. It's a more robust measure. However, for many reasons, we don't do that. But in our minds, it's exactly what we're doing here. We do this squaring instead. We square, and then we root again. Right, so we get back to the original scale. Let's have a look. Student heights again. Student are on average 185 centimeters by this sample. However, we are going to be intelligent now and acknowledging, of course, even though I sample students, I get a mean of 185 centimeters. If I'm going to learn from this data, of course, I'm not learning in the way that I'm saying, okay, 185. Every people in the world would be 185 centimeters. That's what I learned from looking at this data, to, to exaggerate the silliness a little bit. No, I have to accept that, okay, the mean is not like that, but then every person is basically different from the mean, right? Uh, if you want to be formal about it in a continuous world, no one can be exactly on the mean. Uh, everyone will be different from the mean, at least just a little bit. Um, so everyone is actually not, no one is described by the mean. Everyone is different. You tell your boss, you found something, you did a study, 300,000 euro budget study, and you tell him everything is different. What would he say? How different then? Fine enough, we like difference. Could you give me a number that quantifies how different would things be from the mean? Uh oh, back to my study books. Um, and then I found the variance on page four of my stats book. Here is the variance. I can take each number and compare with the mean. I square them, I add them up, and I average. For me, it's an average, even though it's four instead of five. And I get the average squared difference of 29. So people have a variance of 29 centimeters squared. <sighs> Different, difficult concept. Uh, easier concept, let me root the 29 centimeters squared to become 5.4 centimeters. Ah, oh, centimeters I can deal with, centimeters squared is more difficult. Uh, so people are on average 5.4 centimeters different from the average height of 185. That's a valuable information to know could people be, for instance, 50 centimeters away from the mean? Yeah, that's a difficult question. We haven't quite learned how to deal with that because that would require some probability distributions on the whole area. We'll get to that next week. Um, no probability today. This was variance. Important concept, really important. Every uncertainty we learn in this course, every statistical consideration that comes in this course and in the rest of your life is given by some sort of variance. I mean, there are many different variances out there. This is the basic one, and then we go from here. But all of them have this structure, like this one, and conceptually has the same interpretation uh, in the right conditions. But the concept of it is the same. So if you can get that concept, you're well on the way. Sometimes, these two things are combined into a relative measure of variability called the coefficient of variation. It's just a function of these two things that I just taught you, standard deviation relative to the mean, and then it becomes a percentage. That makes sense sometimes if, if one setting you have, you have pigs of uh, two, 300 kilograms uh, that you do studies on and in another booth you test uh, mice how large are mice? 100 grams or something? Less? Uh, at least they are pretty different. So, uh, and I know a certain um, medical company that uh, does um, experiments on, on either type, also other animals in between, should mention those. Uh, and if you want to compare variability between this um, media of testing your drug and these media of testing your drug, uh, maybe it is a good idea to do it relative to some mean or something, to have a, um, have a relative measure of variability, which is really important when you develop drugs. 
to be in or even not only develop but discover drugs because that's the part I've been mostly involved with in discovering drugs. Uh, variability is very important. No variability, of course. So that takes us finishing off the variability part. Are you ready? Some of you also jumped in, the, the one that I prepared for you to, to jump into. Is that a question? No, no. You just want to show you're strong-armed? <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, couldn't really be 80 kilograms. I mean, um, of course, it relies on how could people on average be 80, 80 kilograms away from the mean? Think about this. If people should be 80 kilos, then... Uh, if you think about some are more heavy, some are, uh, let's say that the average weight is, uh, let's just be friendly to this guess, and say the average weight is 100 kilogram. I think it's not, but let's say. Um, how could you be on average 80 kilograms away from that? Well, some would be 80 kilograms above 180, some would be 80 kilograms, uh, and I know, well, some of us are small, yes, but we are goddamn not that small. Uh, and, and then even, if you think about it, when you say some with a standard deviation, if they are on average 80, then half of them must be even farther away, actually. So the way you should think that you should see plus minus two standard deviations on each side for it to make sense, and plus minus 160 kilograms. Wah! I don't think so. Anyway. Bob, you're out! Sorry, Bob, you did really splendid until now. Uh, anyway. We need more summary statistics. 